Hey guys, I ran into another angler, good friend of mine, William Whetstone. We're gonna see what it is that old William does and how he puts them in the boat. You can tell he's pretty tuned in right there. He acts like he can't hear me. He'll, he'll turn around here, Let, let's sneak up on him. There he is, <laughs> there he is. We're gonna show you what it is he's doing. His settings are a little bit different. He's running his uh, live scope on high as far as the noise rejection. That's my personal choice too. I'd normally run it on high, and as you can tell from the shaky camera, he runs that troll mode pretty high too. <laughs> so we're gonna get in there, we're gonna catch some fish, we're gonna go around some contour lines. That's what we're doing. We're out here on the same flat that you saw in the last uh, videos, but instead of being out in the middle of it, he's working the contours on the outside of it and he found something the other anglers hadn't found yet. And we'll have that for you here in just a second. Hit that like button, please subscribe. Let's go catch some fish, guys. He keeps panning left and right with the trolling motor. What he's doing, he's adjusting to get that fish really bright so he knows just exactly where that it is so he can adjust his rod. Oh boy. Not a bad fish. We'll <laughs> I wouldn't we'll say. Take, we'll take five of them Saturday and Sunday and every other day of the week. I guarantee it. I was gonna say, for y'all who can't judge how big this fish is, Look at them bear claws on this dude. <laughs> Look how far apart they are on that fish. Oh, I'm wow. Not, I'm not oh, going to say she's wow. not spawned out either. Oh, like wow. That's huge. That's the first one that I've seen that has not spawned. Beautiful fish. Put a weight on her. All right. Let's weigh her. Is that your biggest fish of the pre-fish so far? Yeah, so far. It's me lying about it. You ain't been here that long, have you? Uh-uh. 138. 138, if y'all can see that. Now, that's a very impressive fish to only be 138. Yep. That fish is 14 and a half inches long, pre-spawn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 14 and a half inches long, pre-spawn. It's so odd to see her not spawned out, especially as late. You can see the eggs coming out of her now. Yeah, she is actively spawning. That yellow that you yeah. see right there is the eggs oozing out of her. That probably happened when he set the hook. Yeah. We'll turn her loose and hopefully she'll hang out. Until Saturday and Sunday. What you think? <laughs> she wasn't sticking around. There's his bait coming over the fish. Here it comes, all done. Hemp scraper. Now, I notice uh, so far, most time, you are pushing into them, you're dropping in front and then pushing to them. Is that what that you normally do? or Because uh, that's a little bit different tactic. It really depends. Uh, Depends on the motion of the boat, how it's moving, depends on if I got the head towards me, the tail away from me. I always want to kind of approach them, the bait going towards the head. Uh, I prefer vertical jigging straight down, but it just depends. I, uh, really. So if the, if the fish's head is towards you, you'll drop in front of it and then just kind of push into it with the momentum of the boat. Yeah, because you don't want to go in to the tail because you're going to push the fish in and tear the fish off. So on windy days, I know that fish's head most of the time is going to be into the wind, 90% of the time. Today, when it's slick calm like this, oh, it could be turned any way they want it to. So I'm pushing now, but really no reason more than just to find the bait, line it up right, and then get it into the fish. Now, I'm going to stay above them pretty good. Then when I get lined up just right and on them, then I'll start easing it down to them in the fashion of it. 
Now you've got, if I can find it on camera here, a pretty good, there it is. Is that a tungsten weight? That is a half ounce Rougarou tungsten. With bobber stops on both sides. Bobber stops on both sides. Okay. That's Rougarou tungsten. What what size is your uh, bait down there? That's an eighth ounce. Eighth ounce, okay. Yep. Tied by a local guy here in Bassford. You can see it's <laughs> beat up pretty good. Yep. But you'll enjoy it. But I have all my all my hair jigs tied with mustad steel hooks, J hooks, never a sickle hook. I'm just not a sickle hook guy. I'm not I've, a fan either. I've had too many break and fail on me. That's a mustad steel hook. You know, when it's all first started, they told you don't use strong steel hooks because you get hung up, you never get it undone. It'll break your line. Well, I mean, now we're using bobber stops. It allows your weight to slide down to your to your bait with your rod tip and get your bait undone. So I, I haven't lost a bait in a long, long, long time due to being hung up. So I don't worry about that now. I want a strong hook, strong hook. Cause I'm, you know, we're chasing the biggest fish we're looking at. We're trying to catch all the biggest fish we can see. If you're yeah. going to catch the biggest fish, you better have the strongest tackle. Uh, steel mustad hook, 14-pound fluorocarbon line, half-ounce tungsten. I want everything to be as strong as it can be. Looks good right now. He's looking 20 foot deep. He's looking 40 feet out. That one giant fish just busted into two on us, I think. He's moving in kind of slow. Fish is at 14 foot out from the troll motor right now. The bait is in the water. Fish is sliding a little bit to its left, so William's staying with it. Having a hard time figuring out which way that, that fish's head is. Don't matter. Don't matter. What you got there is a poverty point slab. <laughs> is, are your arms long enough? No, not really. <laughs> no. Up to me. Good scraper, though. Is that about what you've been catching, William? Uh, some a little bigger, but that's kind of what we're seeing right now. Seeing a lot of those, or uh, no, they're spread out. They've been, you know, six, seven foot of water. But the problem is, they're showing up real big on this, on this graph. That's something I've been hearing a lot yeah. today. And they're, you know, it could be a pound and a half fish, could be a half pound fish, but they're all just, like I said, they're, they're showing up the same. So you got to drop on everything you see, or most everything you see. I'm scanning 70, 75 foot out. You know, you get a good profile that far out. And, Closer you get, smaller they get, but you still got to drop and look. 74 degree water temp over here. Oh, yeah. Yep. Well, I know these fish were spawned out. You know, I've, I have fished this lake since they built this lake. And I've caught fish out in the middle of this lake, you know, in the post spawn pattern. But when they get out here, there's no structure, there's, there's nothing but contour lines. So you got to find out what, what certain depth they're going to be in. Start riding that contour line. Sounds easy, but it can be a challenge. Yeah, it looks like it. Just a floater. I just wanted to show y'all what kind of position he's got himself in here. 
Come on, baby. Oh, she hit it. Sure did. Yeah, I just wanted to show all you guys watching what kind of position he had. You choke up on that rod, you throw it over your head, you throw it off the other side of the boat if you got to. Whatever it takes to get on that fish. Got to be a jack of many trades. Another nice fish. That one's a little shy of the other one. It's yep. because see how skinny the belly is here? And that last one was still spawning. She spawned out. So let's see the weight difference between this one and that last one. I think the last one was what, 138? Yeah, 138 on the other one that, that was still pre-spawn. Now this- they're about the same length. Yeah, they're pretty close. So there ain't more than three eighths inch difference in them two fish. 127, 127. So that fish is a tenth of a pound lighter from eggs. I actually thought it would, would have been a little bit more light than that. But I'll still take her. Oh, I guarantee it. <laughs> well, guys, I have taken up enough of William's time. He was uh, gracious enough to come out here and talk to us. Tell us them settings again there, William. Uh, your uh, TVG is off. Right. Your color gain is set up pretty high, uh, almost 80 or so, I'd say. I run my color gain, uh, you know, noise eject is high, ghost eject is off, TVG is off. Uh, as far as color gain, I run it up about as much as my regular gain, so around 77. Color limit, it's on 28. Why? Probably because I just hit the button by mistake. Usually it's off. Uh, but I run my gain normally between 70, 75, 80, just depends. Uh, really, other than that, man, that's it. Noise reject was on high. That, that was one of the keys. That's what gets the big wide blob sucked down into the harder spots, uh, brighter returns, and makes them easier to see. That's also how that I run mine. And, well, great minds think alike right there. Hey, if you all are in the mood to travel, Miss Whetstone will get you all hooked up. What's the name of her travel agency? Guys, you can call her or contact her, the Travel Junkie. She's on Facebook. It's the Travel Junkie. A lot of you guys travel following him and his crappie trails all over the country. Why not give her a call? Let her set you up in a cabin, lakeside, Airbnb, whatever. She can even book your flight. She can take you from here to Cancun, from Cancun to Russia, to Alaska, to California. It don't matter. Wherever you want to go, she can send you there. Hey, can she take me to Cancun? Absolutely. Oh, look out, Brittany. We might uh, plan us a trip. Yep, so give her, call her or look her up on Facebook at The Travel Junkie. And she'll get you hooked up. There you go, guys. Well, I appreciate you, man. Let's go see who else we can find and make another video and show you another different approach to catching these fish. Hit that subscribe button. Please like us. We'll see you next time.